You're welcome, guys. In this session, I'll be talking about uh, security product slash uh, logging tool, I guess. It's called Teapot with T-Pot. So you can download that from here, uh, from right from the GitHub. I will post this. Somebody at work uh, who works in the security sector and is pretty well versed with all these concepts and is an excellent guy to work with. Uh, mentioned this to me a few months back, and I just hadn't I hadn't had a time to do this. Uh, just want to go over what it is, uh, and then the installation process. I will be over some time on the weekend, maybe over the next few months or weeks. Uh, look at the stats and probably create another session or video to show what it kind of looks like on your network but uh, there are lots of uh, uh, sites that you can go to this is actually a really nifty uh, link so when you have the page up and running you should see you can go to the IP address and then 64297 with the tools installed this is an nginx basically a risk proxy running on the back end to give you a nice GUI tool interface so and security meter this is what I'm looking at right now you can see what's these are the different honeypots that have been set up uh, globally so you can see it says honeypot, honeypot infrastructure and you can see what's happening across the world and who's doing what sort of thing right so gives you an idea of hey okay somebody just did an SSH uh, attempt to an IP address so it's 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 really nice to even just <laughs> just looking at it, it it's kind of you can just look at it all day long probably but anyways let's get into this uh this is just an interface uh, so i i am here in uh, kibana that's what kibana whatever it's called however you pronounce it and in there there are different dashboards you can use so i'm just showing you one of them one of many that are actually there so you can tell, tell that i'm here i i'm sitting here and then i'm getting attacked from all these different locations. This is at a different network right now, not my home network. So I just wanted to show you guys what it would look like. So uh, Canada, Denmark, United States, uh, China, Netherlands, all these. Uh, I, I put a, so this is prior to I putting any blocks on or any firewall on. So that's why you see a drop all of a sudden. So just wanted to see. So my home network is uh, set up that I have an ISP provider uh, router. Uh, it has a firewall. I'll have to disable that or do DMZ on it. Then I have another firewall. And then my wireless routers also have a firewall. So it will take me a little, little bit longer to actually get my sensor up and running and then uh, looking at the network. So I'll try to get that uh, video as well uploaded and posted soon. So. Uh, to do the install, there are two, two ways to do it. One is to do it through the ISO, which is what I'll be showing you guys here. And there's a little gotcha on that that I got stuck into doing an install. I'll try to insert that uh, issue that I had with installing the teapot somewhere in this clip as well, insert somewhere. Uh, so these are, so you can read about teapot on their site, different ports that you need open, what not, the requirements. Yes, the requirement is real. Uh, if you have an SSD, uh, use that uh, H, uh, like a spinner, that won't work well. I tried it, it didn't go too well for me, so. It would just lag and not work and then just crash on me all the time, so. Uh, so let's do the installation. So there are two um, type of methods. So one's, well, let's just look at it, standalone two ways to do it so you can do standalone install and distributed install so what this this is what i am going to be using and showing i already did the hive sensor last night so i will not go over that again or maybe i'll insert the clip that i did last night where i got stuck up to that point and then i will give you guys an idea how to install the hive sensor uh but uh, you need the hive and you need the hive sensor if you're doing the distributed. So why I'm doing the distributed setup is because I can move my hive sensor. It's a, it's a VM, right? So this is my sensor, which is turned off right now, but this is the hive, right? So this is what I'll be installing in this session. Um, I can move my hive, hive, hive sensor to any location I want. Like, for example, to, um, like, you know, if you have on a network with multiple firewalls, you can probably just 
simply change your network settings on your VM to kind of use that network instead. So instead of having to move the Hive, so Hive is going to stay behind uh, firewall. It won't be accessible to the world, but the Hive sensor will be able to talk internally to the SSH port uh, to be able to uh, upload its uh, log files. So both the Hive and the Hive sensor will need the same amount of disk space basically because it does I think it copies it over it doesn't move it per se so you will still have the same log sitting on the hive sensor and you'll have a copy of it on the hive as well <clears throat> so this is the port that will uh, use to uh, write over to the hive and uh, I'll show you guys uh, how to set this up as well uh, but uh, you, it's straightforward uh, you can probably follow along but uh, might as well show it in the clip right so anyway so let's get started yeah look, look at that sorry there i had a coughing spell there that's why i had to mute myself for a second uh let's see so where were we yeah let's get started right so first of all we need to download the iso so you can download the iso or you can do the um two ways to install it do it the iso based method so installation those two distributed and standalone are two approaches you can use to deploy but you can either but to actually get to the installation you can either do the download iso or you can do um install of debian and do the post install user method so this is this is when you have a debian instance running i'm using debian as an instance I don't know if it'll work on Ubuntu. It should technically, um, but they're they're asking for Debian, so that's what I'm using. Uh, if you have Debian running, this is what you would need to do. You'll need to do the these steps basically, and then run the install. And if you're using the method that I'm showing you, the, you just download the ISO file. So I have the Teapot AMD64 ISO downloaded. I have it mapped to my Hive. If you look at the image, it's right there. It's the one that I will be using. And I've created, uh, I think, uh, 50 or 60 gigs of, uh, yes, so 52. Uh, they recommend 128, but I don't think I'll be doing a whole lot of logging, to be honest. So I might turn it off eventually. It is a little bit resource intense, to, intense uh, process. This is just my... This is a different server I have running. This is my cameras and security system. Uh, so let's get started on the ISO install method. So once you have the ISO downloaded, uh, you can go to there. I'm going to show you guys where you get it from. It's on the, if you're new to GitHub basically, right? So uh, let's do the download the ISO image file. It says go to the release page. You click on the link there. It'll take you to there. Uh, download page and then down here if you scroll down you'll see a bunch of so if you're on an arm 64 structure infra like a hardware you can download this but uh, I downloaded this guy right here because I'm on 64 and this is the latest release of September 15th 2022 uh, we're in 2023 so it's they haven't really released anything new uh, except that I think that the recent release they separated the hive and the the tools that are in the hive versus the hive sensors So I think that was an update. So that it says distributed installation with hive and hive sensor. So which is good Otherwise you were stuck uh, installing it uh, all in one. So you'll have to install the whole Hive and then hive sensors and whatnot all in one So we're gonna connect to the VM here and fire it right up I did get stuck uh, doing the install so don't use the first option I got stuck um, however when I tried it at a different location like on a different network I think my firewall might be blocking at home the HTTP or it might be using some some URLs that my firewall ends up blocking so I get stuck I will post that clip where I get stuck uh, I think right about here probably posted and then we'll come come back to this and show you guys how to actually go around it so uh... Oh shit, yeah, I did fail
I mean, oh shoot, it did fail. Uh, if you've seen the clip, this is what you need to do uh, after the fact that uh, it failed on you with the same error message that you saw. So to resolve that error message, if you're doing the teapot install using the ISO method and you use the first option for teapot, uh, you need to go in under, under advanced options, choose the expert install. So again, I'm booting off the image file. So I'm booting off the image file. I don't have anything installed on this VM. And we're gonna do the expert install. Uh, let's see if I can make it a little bit bigger for us to see better. So of course, um, the really easy, straightforward process, choose your country or region. I'm gonna choose Canada because that's where I am. Uh, I'm not gonna choose that, don't need that. Uh, touch wood, uh, configure your keyboard map, American English. Configure the network. If you have a static IP, you can use that approach, uh, but detect network should work. Um, I It should work for me, but I have a different gateway setup, so hopefully it will pick up the network okay and I can download the files and required, uh, required stuff that it needs for its installation. So let's see. Because the other, the sensor that I did the install on, I had to specify my IP address, my manually specified IP for this. So, but let's see what happens here. Uh, so we're gonna do this, uh, choose a mirror. Uh, this is where I changed. So instead of HTTP, I'm using HTTPS. I think the auto uses HTTP, HTTP maybe. That's where I got stuck, but I wasn't able to uh, run the auto install or the teapot installation as such, but so I used the expert mode. So yeah, I'm gonna use this Debian.org. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that as such. I'm not modifying anything, continue, continue. And I'm gonna, yes, I'm gonna use the stable version, bullseye. Download the installer components. I'm not gonna select any of these. That's gonna uh, probably give you an option there. So I'm not gonna check anything off. Don't need anything, these are, as you can see, all the components for the center to complete the install will be loaded automatically uh, and are not listed here. So these are optional. So I'm gonna click on continue, but if you think you need something, go ahead, have a look, install those. But I'm not, I'm gonna go ahead, let the process start. And the installation is uh, quite time consuming. I do have NVMe drive, so it's a little faster probably for read writes, but if you're on uh, SSD, yeah, it might take a little bit longer. Okay, so set up users. It's So all I'm doing is continuing going next, next, next on the steps, set up users and passwords. Uh, enable shadow password, yes please. Uh, configure the clock, it will automatically do it. Uh, detect the disk, yes. And it's going to set up the partitions the way that it wanted. Uh, it's going to partition the disk. It doesn't give me an option, right, to partition a specific way. It's going to just do it for you guys. Although it says an expert install, but it just does it for you guys. So install the base system. This is the part that uh, I got stuck running the installer so you, you guys will see that this runs just fine I think it was failing at 6% when it was trying to do system D I believe or something like that where, where it was trying to retrieve it so I'm guessing it was trying to retrieve it from an FTP or an HTTP address where my firewall probably blocked it so I wasn't able to fetch that package and it would crash but this works so I would suggest you use this approach use an expert install to save you guys some time because yeah why waste your time when you know that that message might come up right so so let's see if, if you can get past the six percent mark that's where I was crashing it was at six percent mark
I guess while it's doing that, well, no, I'll let it, I'll let it run. I'm going to show you guys something. You, you can something you can have a look at and then enjoy. There you go. So it's running. I'll come back to this. Uh, I'll let it run in the background, and we can open this guy right here. There you go, guys. Fireworks, right? So it's like, oh yeah, the U.S. is attacking the, the these places. They're attacking, uh, yeah, like it's it's crazy well we have somebody up north in canada uh, i don't know if you guys noticed that just 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 a second ago i saw somebody attack up north so wow i hope it wasn't santa so or his workshop so we will uh move this guy down here maybe Yeah, there's no, well, maybe, I don't know if I can, no, I don't think I can shrink this, uh, I wanted you guys, I wanted you guys to kind of just look at that, so, versus this screen, I'll move it down here. Oh, well, that was, that was quick, so, you're going to choose the... Linux image AMD 64 that's what I choose that's what I chose and it does pick up the the current the latest one I believe so uh, yes I'm gonna uh, I did the targeted you can do generic and include all the available drivers but I will be using specific drivers for my specific system so I will let it pick that Well, maybe this looks good, I guess. Um, let's see if I can shrink that. Open to a new window, maybe. Move tab to a new window. And then maybe I can do this. So you guys can see this on the side as well, hopefully. Which I don't think it... Oh, wait. Uh, I guess there you go. There you go. Yeah, there. That looks nice, right? So I should do this for all the upcoming videos. Have this uh, playing on the side there. Uh, okay, so the next step on the right, you can see we got the configure the package manager. So it did the base install. So that is done. So we can do the configuration. Um, please choose whether you want to have any use non free software. I'm going to say no. Uh, use country, so I'm going to select no. This one, yes. Enable source repositories and APT, yes. And then it's going to give me a bunch of other options. I'm sure you guys are still looking on the left there, probably not looking at this screen. So. I don't blame you. I'm looking at that screen myself too. Uh, backport itself. So security updates and releases. That's it. I'm not going to worry about the backported software uh, piece. Continue. So now that part is done. Select and install the software.
All right, this step is important that I want to show you guys. So continue with our bootloader. I'm going to choose that. I, I'm going to do the finished installation and I would have to remove my image uh, manually from here. But uh, don't do that till you hit the finished installation. It's going to set up its uh, user's passwords. But when it's rebooting, you need to manually remove the media otherwise my vm is set to boot from the cd so it will boot from the image all the time there so this is what i'm talking about right you saw that it did the reboot but it actually since the media is still mounted it went to the same GUI, same interface. So I'm going to eject it and I'm going to do a restart. So control delete and now it should continue its installation. There you go. Welcome to Grub. Okay, click on OK. It's going to ask you to set up your username and password as well. So this is where the difference is between the Hive and the Hive sensor. So standard installs everything. So your tools, uh, your Nginx proxy interface, and your sensors. Uh, with Hive, it only installs the tool and the interface that you need to kind of look at your dashboards and stuff. Uh, but the re if you're doing the Hive install only, you must have a Hive sensor running somewhere. For me, uh, you can use this sensor as well, but I'm going to be using the Hive sensor. Uh, if you're using the Hive sensor, you'll have to, if you don't want your network to show up on uh, their global honeypot, uh, there is a step that you will need to do. Um, this, this part you'll have to do to disable the transmission so uh, if you don't want them to have a have your honeypot listed as well as a as one of these <laughs> uh, honeypots uh, globally but so I'm gonna do the honey the hive sensor and I'm gonna click OK oh no sorry I already done the hive sensor sorry my bad I'm gonna do the hive install so I'm gonna do the hive it's the same process you just click hive sensor they're both the same so I'm not going to repeat this. It's so make sure you have both the Hive sensor and the Hive. If you're not doing the standard install, if you're doing the standard install, uh, just complete that and you'll have everything uh, available right off the bat. So I'm going to do the Hive. It's going to ask you for the password for TSEC. Um, that is the default user, and uh, you cannot change that. Uh, you need to create another account. So I'm going to, of course, give it hashtag. And I'm going to give it password. All right. Oh. And it will finish doing the install. So it will start the process. Yeah, I don't know why I can't. I guess I can do this. Yeah, you guys are not able to see the bottom section there. So let me see if I can remove the toolbar. Oh, there you go. That's good enough. And I'll move this over to the right there. So you guys can still see this happening on the left. And we'll let it finish. I'll come back to the session again. Once it's done install installation, it should do 
everything automatically at from this point on it shouldn't crash on you it shouldn't do anything weird so i'm going to step away let it run and come back drawing something here in paint uh, so I could uh, kind of show you guys so that's it that's all you had to do was uh, do the hive install and that's about it I will quickly go over the hive sensor so I'm going to start that up and I'm going to uh, connect this to push the logs over to the hive so we'll be using this step right here uh, if I log in real quick here, uh, T sec, uh, and if I go sudo su dash, that's what you have. This is uh, we are still on the hive. This is not the hive sensor. Um, let's see, what was my password? And you do DSP. I think DSP dot sh or DPS dot sh. There you go. It will tell you the services that are running. So it's dps.sh. You run under the command. It You can't run the command unless you logged in as sudo, sudo su. So now that my sensor is up and running, I think it is. Yeah, sorry, I'm doing it this way. Otherwise, I would have done it uh, in the SSH and all that stuff. It does disable SSH. It puts it on a custom port. You can still get to it through that custom port that it creates, but by default it's disabled. So uh, this is my sensor. Uh, the, you can't really tell. I, I guess you can rename the host name. So it says awful cradle or whatever on the right on the left there before before the t uh, before the login. You can change the host name. So give you an idea of what it is. Is it a sensor? Is it a hive? Right. Let's do. Uh, I don't think that's gonna work. Oh, it did work. Okay. Uh, because I think I had a uh, extra space or something. Uh, so DPS dot sh. This is my sensor. So quick way to distinguish between sensor and the hive is that. The sensor has all these uh, pots, like you can see, uh, I can't really hover over. But you can see, read here, it's got the um, elastic pot, it's got right here, right? I will try to, and then it disappears, my cursor disappears. Uh, DDoS pot and whatnot, everything is here, all the different honey pots, they call them honey pots. And this is just my GUI interface. So as you can see right here, engine, NGINX, that's the risk proxy, NGINX. I think that's how they pronounce it. And the interface is to, uh, let's see, the port number is 249242, I'm sorry, 64297. So I'm going to go to that IP address of my hive. This is my sensor, is 67, this is 65. and colon 64297 you're gonna get this because i did not put https uh, you should if you're running in a production have everything secured using ssl certificate so and i'm gonna use my web you can use your tsec uh, user as well i think you can but i am going to uh, what was i was going to say hashtag right that's what we created and there we go so it says yeah the time is off completely that's not the time right now i think it i think the default is the utc or something like that you can change the time but uh i, I would just leave it so so security matters security meter again will take us to that site that wonderful site that we got running right here wow 
Um, okay. Let me close that. Uh, attack map. Uh, just one thing about attack map is that I didn't know this, but this is a live view. So it only updates after the fact that you have opened it. So anything that happens from the time you opened it, that's when you'll see these uh, the IP attacks pop up and whatnot. So I will not see anything right away because I don't have a sensor running. I have to put the sensor in. So let's do that. Let's do the sens sensor tie-in to the hive because it doesn't come with a default sensor. So let's do that. This is my hive. This is my sensor. Give me a second. I have to pause this. Okay, let's continue. Sorry, I had to step away for a minute or two. So let's do the sensor install. So I'm by sensor install, I mean deploy the sensor to our hive that we just created. So to do that, we're going to go back to their page and we're going to run this command on our sensor. So this is our sensor. If not sure, again, run dps.sh give you this let's clear the screen so we're at the top no sorry dps.sh and there we go uh we are already we have already done the sudo su dash as they're asking because otherwise you can't run this dps command we are going to do deploy.sh if you have a firewall between the two vms or for some reason make sure or you have isolation built in in your network home network or work network make sure the port is actually open so it needs the 64295 uh let's see let's see if you can give me a second guys i'm trying to remove this so we can see everything down here and then we can leave that running as well on the side there for visual effects uh, let's go there. Uh, yes, I'm going to continue the deployment. Please provide data and the username. It's asking for the username. Password that we had set up. And the IP. I believe it was 65, right? Uh, yes, it was 65. And it's going to create its SSH keys, and it is good. It says that teapot, sorry, I can't move the mouse over. So it says teapot hive tunnel test okay, deploying uh, the, the teapot hive, De deploying to the teapot hive. So, what that means is uh, my hive, my teapot, the honey pot or teapot, got deployed, and then it's uh, it will be, I guess, it'll be part of this now, provided. <laughs> Again, uh, how good my firewall rules are and how my structure is. So this is the this is what I want to kind of quickly go over what you might have to do. So for example, let's let's assume this is your hive sensor, right? You have or sorry, let's call this as a hive sensor. And then I I have to move my hive sensor. Let's see if I can move it. I, I guess it can't. This uh, yeah, sorry. I thought you could move these things. Anyways, you get the point, right? So this needs to move all the way to somewhere out here. My hive sensor. Yeah, sorry, that doesn't look. Uh, I'm just making it worse. Am I not? Uh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, so you you get the point. So my hive sensor. Uh, geez, enough with the my hive sensor needs to be here somewhere so the traffic coming in so my traffic coming in yeah sorry this is i should probably just use the arrow right so so the the global internet traffic coming in yeah there you go i can move this at least coming in to my sp can be routed let's see if i can do a wiggly to this guy so, so they need to be able to talk so so it's visible to the world. Then I can do a compare and then move it back behind my firewall to see 
how bad or how good it is, right? Right now I'm gonna leave it in my in my setup as it is. But if I want to see how badly my ISP is getting uh, hit, right, from the hackers, I will have to figure out a way to move my Hive sensor, not the Hive uh, console or the tools, to somewhere here. So on my firewall, uh, this you might have to do the same thing on your firewall. You might have to enable D DMZ or rules for this specific IP. So what I would have to do, uh, my ISP, it goes to a firewall. So I'll have to do a DMZ. Uh, my ISP gives the IP for my Hive as well, actually my ISP router. So I'll have to figure out a way to do a port forwarding or complete DMZ on my firewall. Then from a wireless router, because the wireless router also has a built-in firewall, right? So then I have to open that to this as well because I can't really physically <laughs> move my VM, right? It's sitting on a server. It's not sitting on a server. It's sitting on a desktop with a bunch of VMs. And now I'm going to move my computer from all the way wherever it is sitting right now to somewhere down here just for this to take place. So I'll have to figure that out. I will post probably in the next few sessions. Maybe, maybe not. I have no idea. Uh, to see how bad or how good it looks like so so again if you don't want to be part of this uh this community uh so your pot doesn't show up on the on, on a global scale you need to do this part so and it says hey the service you're moving the comment so you'll have to do this part uh it says teapot is probably only accessible any by default captured as submitted to community backend so it is by default submitted so this community backend uses this to feed. You may opt out by, by removing the service from. So you'll have to remove all of this. So just delete that. It says remove the following lines. Uh, if you're using nano, but uh, you know what? Why am I even talking, right? So copy. I can just show you guys real. I, I can't copy and paste on a uh, Hyper-V. System CTL stop teapot. And this is on the sensor side, remember, but if you have the standalone, it will apply to that VM as well. So I believe it would. I am not sure. I shouldn't say that. Let's clear that. Let's do. Everything is down now, so we just killed everything. Now we need to open this file. I use, I think they have nano, yes, they have nano as well, so. Nano opt slash teapot slash etc slash teapot dot yaml. That's a yaml extension file. And I need to go all the way to the bottom. We can probably just comment it and then that should be okay. Uh, let's control W is to find uh, stuff on nano. Uh, e W S poster. Actually, you know what? Uh, e W S poster should take us there. So it's all the way at the bottom. Seems like it. So all we need to do is either comment it out or just delete the uh, lines. So. Let's just delete them out. It's interesting that they, here on the left, uh, you can see the port, it says 2020.03, but for some reason, my sensor is sitting at 22.04, so. Oh, YAML is a specific format, speci specific, um, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, format, I guess, right? So it follows a certain uh, rules so if you mess up the YAML file extension edit uh, so for example this colon space you put another space it'll error out so it needs a certain specific format so it's better to just delete this so we're gonna just delete this because I don't want my home system doing all that stuff so control X to exit out of here and then close to save yes 
and that is it so I'm gonna clear that I'm gonna look at the service again and we're gonna start it up everything is down now we're gonna just start it I'm just using the up arrow key so you can toggle between commands for those that don't know and that should start it up without any error messages touch wood let's see what happens and yes it does take a while to um, kind of spin up all the services so again back to this message you might have to do or this picture i should say so move your hive sensor to somewhere where the internet can access to see how badly your network uh, has actually been impacted so how bad i have multiple systems in place but you might just have an isp router and all you need to do is do a dmz to this uh, vm or this ip and you should be good and then you can then deploy a firewall and then have a bunch of other rules set up there and see what difference the firewall makes that's exactly what i'll be doing and then if i get time uh, enough time to kind of post another session another video maybe a week down the road to give you guys an idea of the difference between when it was open to the world versus when it was actually just sitting behind the firewall and everything else and that is it i think and we're gonna do and make sure the services are up and running and if i go oh nice uh, sorry if i go back to my system i should well i won't see the stats right away anyways so it takes a while but i have the teapot map open so uh, i'm not going to refresh it but if i was to see something i would see it now possibly so this is the gui login and then you can pick up pick different ports or different not ports different dashboards so this is the one that i was showing here uh where did you go right here that's from my other setup that i have up and running for about a day now so yeah it's it's taking over a little country is a bit no longer exist in that of you please use so i'm going to just wait and see what happens after the fact that or maybe i something goofed up but i didn't see any install errors so i think it's just a glitch but let's see teapot if everything is giving me the same thing then we got a problem so it's got no result is this in data view please use another field so i'm getting a bunch of these error messages or whatever these are uh, most likely i want to say that it's my firewall and it's not a bad corrupt system but you know when in doubt reboot i'm gonna reboot this as well I'm going to pause it and then come back. Let's go this and see if we get a bunch of error messages. No, it's still doing that. Uh, the map is loading. The keyword no longer is in the data view. Please another field. Not sure why it's giving me that. Maybe I just need some logs. So, so I'll come back to it. Probably just need to wait for the logging to kind of kick in but yeah so everything else is working i believe uh let's see the teapot uh, teapot dashboard so yeah it's picking up some stuff uh it's probably going to come back it's, yeah there it goes picked up some stuff because I think there was a blank, something like this here. So there's nothing here. That's why you probably would see it. So I wouldn't panic. Uh, maybe panic after a day if you don't see anything <laughs> happening. But that's how you do the install. Thanks for sticking around, guys. I uh, appreciate it. If you can leave a feedback or a comment. Or if you can subscribe to the channel. okay i am back again um this is still going on uh, i just wanted to so this 
has been open for about an hour now or since we did the install I guess I'm not seeing anything so whatever I have set up I guess on my firewall and rules that I have behind you know what right I'm behind all this so I'm all the way here so somebody has to get all the way from there to here uh, I'm not seeing anything so I'm gonna try now and then maybe before I even I upload the video uh, we might be able to I might be able to see some results when I this is open to the world so uh, by open everything needs to be open all the ports so as you can see from here, right, uh, where is it? From here you can see, right, so it's different ports that are getting attacked. So everything needs to be open to figure out uh, what ports are being targeted on your system. So that's what I will be doing in a bit. And then hopefully even before I upload the video later, either tonight or tomorrow morning or afternoon, uh, you should see the stats. Hopefully some stats, like at least give you guys an idea of what it actually looks like. It is pretty nice. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that, but it does look, it doesn't look anything like this, but it does look similar. So I want to show you guys that before I even actually upload the video. So let me figure this out. I'll move a bunch of things around, open a bunch of firewalls and ports and everything else. So. All right, there we go, guys. I just figured out how to open my VM to the world. So here it is. Uh, here's the here's what I was talking about. This is what it looked like the T map or yeah T teapot attack map. So the second I open it up, yeah, I, I see all these hits. But behind my firewall, uh, I guess it was protected. So. So whatever I have configured here, I guess it was working for me. I had like zero entries for the past hour and within the last minute itself, since I opened it up, I'm getting all these uh, attacks happening. So this is real time. Again, any so if I refresh this, if I do refresh, you can see there's nothing here. The second you open this page is when it starts uh, looking at um, uh, attack vectors and then this is at least the t-map the pod attack map but if i was to go into say for example as you can see it's giving me a bunch of things now since it's open it's open to the world so this is what my network my home network is uh, seeing from outside right so all these uh, so i guess india i guess uh, uk up north us and i can see let's see if i can germany netherlands india um so within the last minute so these are coming slowly because i i guess it needs needs the data so it's yeah it's like it's hot right now it's like it's interesting just look at this like right like wow again this is just the honeypot right so they're looking at this and they're attacking me, a, or attacking the pot, so to speaking. But uh, this uh, Surikata gives me access to more than just that. So uh, what are they trying to do? What's happening? It's not just the honeypot. It's like basically everything kind of thing. Anyways, anyways, I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, this is interesting. So I'm going to leave it running for maybe next... 12 hours and I'm going to put it back behind the firewall to see what the difference is. You already saw what it looks like uh, right off the bat when it's behind the firewall. And this is the f uh, this is actually well, somebody's trying to do SSH to the honeypot trap, right? So again, like I said, this is the honeypot they're trying to access. So, But again, uh, if they're trying to do the honeypot just alone, uh, they probably are actually targeting your entire network constantly so uh, this gives you an idea of why it's important to have a firewall on your system and not to have dmz enabled on any of your uh, critical systems that you have at work or even at home so stay stay protected guys uh, i think this is it for this video i will have another one uh, so something called uh, it's a security onion and I will be trying to set it up, and then hopefully that is a little bit better versus teapot. But this is this is good enough for my needs for home setup. But 
if you want to do something free, uh, Security Onion is another one, which I'll be doing another session maybe next week or this weekend soon. Stay tuned, guys. Again, uh, once again, <laughs> stay safe. Uh, please, if you did like the video, please hit the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Much appreciated. And do feel free to comment. And if you have any requests, do, do post them below. I will try to get to them and then hopefully try to do more sessions like these. That was cool. All right, okay, stay safe, guys.